Hello everyone. Welcome to the From Compliance to Competency webinar series presented by the Regional Centers for Workforce Transformation. My name is Jen Vogt. In addition to my role as Region 2 North Lead for RCWT, I am also the Staff Development Trainer for the Jefferson Rehabilitation Center in Watertown. I would also like to introduce to you a workforce champion from Region 2 North, Mark Daru, who represents United Helpers, Inc., the Mosaic Division. Mark and I will be guiding you through understanding Goal Area 5, Competency Area S. In the next 20 minutes, you will be given a couple of scenarios and will view visuals that will help you to remember the skills associated with Competency S, but you will also see examples of how and when to utilize your skills to best demonstrate your competency. As previously mentioned, today's competency is Competency S, which is supporting safety. This competency is important for many reasons. We as staff must make sure that the people we support are safe from any possible hazards and that we, as well as our coworkers, remain safe too. It is essential that we are able to effectively identify hazards, eliminate the hazards as best we can, and not create any potential hazards ourselves. One immediate safety need that comes to mind for the people we support is that we must be able to help a person in their time of need, including when they lose control and produce challenging behaviors. This is where our Skip R program or implementation of promote techniques come into play. And we wanna be as proactive as possible whenever we begin to see the signs of stress creep in. There are two main skills associated with competency S, and these two primary skills are, number one, supports the safety of all individuals in everyday situations, and number two, follows proper safety procedures in transportation situations. By doing so, the DSP enables the person we support to remain safe while in or out of a vehicle by following and modeling proper safety practices in which the person we support will come to expect. We will go over how to utilize these skills more specifically, but let's start off with one of the two scenarios that I've prepared. Keep the skills listed on this slide in mind as you listen to each scenario. Scenario number one, you are a DSP and you are supporting a person from their local IRA. While working in the IRA one evening, you are assisting Jerry on his walk to the bathroom when you discover that rapidly rising flames are coming from an open kettle on the stove that's been left unattended for just a couple of minutes by the cook. As a DSP, how should you respond in this situation? Remember, according to competency S, you want to respond in a way that supports the safety of all individuals in everyday situations. There are several specific things that you can do to demonstrate this competency. As we go over these, I want you to think of how you would apply each task to the scenario. In order to demonstrate the skills we just went over, a DSP should be able to operate emergency equipment as required and if available. Any detected problem with emergency equipment or the need of emergency supplies are reported to appropriate personnel. The DSP should also seek out and report potential hazards related to fire, ice, etc. Now let's go back to the scenario where you and the person you support have discovered towering flames coming from a kettle on the stove that's been left unattended for just a couple of minutes. Remember, our main goal here is to support safety. One way in which you can respond is by moving the person we support away from the dangerous situation. You may begin shouting out, fire, 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 three times. You should then begin evacuation and ensure that the appropriate emergency personnel are contacted as quickly as possible. Listen for the official announcement at the fire location to ensure that you are taking the appropriate next steps. Further assistance may be given to evacuate everyone to the safe zone or to relocate to a designated meeting area. 
As the DSP, you may need to sweep each room to make sure everyone has evacuated. However, if the responding emergency personnel are on site, you would be expected to provide support to the people who reside at that site while the emergency crews respond to the fire and possible rescue efforts. When providing support to the people who reside at that site, a staff member will conduct a headcount and an assessment of the well being of each person should be completed while you await further assistance. The responsibilities of staff members should be clearly stated in your facility's fire plan. By responding in this manner, you will be demonstrating to the person you support that you value their safety. As a follow-up after the event, report any problems with emergency equipment, fire extinguishers, alarms, fire boxes, pull boxes, etc. And if there were problems, it may also be helpful to ensure that other sites and locations are checking their emergency equipment as a protective measure. Also, it is important that we learn why the kettle was left unattended. Retraining may be needed in regards to kitchen safety. Acting much like a safety auditor, be on the lookout for what are or could become serious dangerous situations. Now for a second scenario that will emphasize the importance of supporting safety, we will be discussing a situation that applies to a safety concern in the area of transportation. You are a DSP. You have been asked to transport a person we support to an important medical appointment. The person you will be transporting utilizes a wheelchair so that you have reserved an accessible vehicle for this purpose. When preparing to latch down the wheelchair in the vehicle, you discover that one of the safety latches on the floor of the vehicle is broken. There are others that can be fastened, but this one cannot. If you don't leave soon, the person you support will miss their medical appointment. As a DSP, how should you respond in this situation? Remember, according to competency S, you want to respond in a way that supports the safety of all individuals in everyday situations and follows proper safety procedures in transportation situations. Just as a reminder, in order to demonstrate the skills within Goal Area 5, Competency S, a DSP should be able to operate emergency equipment as required and if available. Any detected problem with emergency equipment or the need of emergency supplies are reported to appropriate personnel. The DSP should also seek out and report potential hazards related to fire, ice, etc. So those were just a few examples of ways we can demonstrate competency S. When supporting a person with a disability, remember that supporting safety is a continuous endeavor. Feeling safe is crucial for the people we support to be at ease. When you are truly safe, they will feel safe too. If you would like to utilize this webinar, we have crafted an interactive activity entitled Safety Scavenger Hunt that you can use to continue engaging with Core Competency S. This activity emphasizes the values associated with Competency S and can be utilized while listening to the webinar or afterwards to identifying information that was retained. Thank you for listening. There are more webinars like this on each of the 23 core competencies. There are many other resources on the Regional Centers for Workforce Transformation website. Please take advantage of these valuable resources. Have a great day, everyone.